Welcome back. It's been two days since I've been down here, so I think they're dry. <laughs> Funny thing is, I sat down yesterday. I was like, I'll just spend an hour or two on this new song. You're probably hearing it in the background now. 15 hours later, I finally finished it. One of those things when you have OCD and you're like, okay, I'll just take a break. And then every time you think you're going to go do something else, you're like, oh, wait, I can change it one different way and make it better this way or make it better that way. And you just find yourself uh, stuck. All right, so here's the first one. Looks like everything's nice and tight. No gaps. So, uh, that's nice. I figured I'd wait to unveil these so, um, you know, we can all be surprised together if one of them's ruined. <laughs> I sincerely hope not. Yeah, see, it's stuck to it. That's why I used this. This is a uh, parchment paper, not wax paper. Simple little life, another tip, uh, you know, he said to use when you're using epoxy, use parchment instead of wax paper. And it does, it works so much better. All right. So I'm gonna have to take that in the grinder and flatten it down. Looks like we're good. Then the bounds, we got plenty of room for movement. Just gotta make sure we get all this glue off. You know, that's what the surface plates are for. Mine's always covered with stuff, but there is a surface plate down here. Right here. <laughs> We just uh, take this, put down a piece of sandpaper, wet it down, and just go to town, make sure everything's scuffed up and ready to go. But you also give it another, uh, you know, flatten it out and give it a good space for making contact with this. Because if you try it now, you can see it's all glue. Glue is all wobbling on there, so we got to make them flat. It looks like these were a success. We got plenty of room you know, to come down and come in and move it up or down or move it in and out. What I'm gonna have to do before I drill it is mark a line. So you want them even here and even here, and then you drill the holes. But you wanna make sure, like just like that, you don't want them sticking over or anything. And these, these should be pretty simple too. Yeah, these are the simple ones. You just glue it together, so. Yeah, they worked out pretty nice. Just a little bit of right there. <laughs> Stuck together a little bit. Oh, there we go. But yeah, see, all this stuff is getting ground down. That's why I like to make them everything bigger. Because making them bigger, you can always make it smaller. But if you make it too small, then you got to start over. And like I said, now we got it sandwiched in between. We know, you know, how we want them. Same with this, sandwiched in between, we got it. So that's why it's always important to do double sides so and mark them off so you don't make two of one side. The new song in the background even has lyrics. If you go to my music channel, which the link is in the description, it's kind of funny because uh, every year there's like one or two water bugs, which are huge cockroaches in this basement, but I've never ever seen one in this shop until now. I saw it running around out by the laundry room and I put down the uh, roach killer and it went and it died, like slowly died right in front of the grinder. And right when I did it, I had the song, Agony. So that's what you're hearing in the background. <laughs> but I digress. Let's get on to, uh, I'm gonna do the stainless steel ones now. And I've got a pretty wild idea. It might be, uh, a little unorthodox, but I want to try something. I want to try to find where I put all my stuff. <laughs> what I'm thinking is I'm going to mark out two bolsters. And then I'm going to cut a 30 degree angle on them first. And then, then we'll put them up here and, uh, you know, with the 30 degree angle and get them all squared. Let's do that now. Here we go. So what I'm thinking here, I want to make sure I cut this big. So let me put this down. I'm going to put it even with the bottom because it's going to come up in here and then it's going to come out here. But I want to cut it big enough to come out, say, probably like right here. 
That way I have all this room, plus I'm putting a 30 degree angle on it first. So that means it's only gonna be from like here to here. So we have plenty of room to work. Like I said in the last video, we're not worried about wasting material because if you gotta do it again, you're wasting even more material. Now I'm gonna cut out one big piece and do the 30 degree and then, you know, then I'll cut those in half. So, inch and seven eighths. That's what I'm talking about. I always flip it over. I didn't even to cut, but it's good just to get in the habit of doing stuff like this. You know, so you know it's always going to be, you know, how you want it. Also, we got to remember the saw blade's an eighth of an inch. So we have plenty of room on both sides to work with and everything like that. Let me cut this on the bandsaw. Here we go. Let's cut this stainless steel. I think this I think this uh, blade is about seen its last day. So there we go. I gotta say we want to do the 30 here because it's square. What I might want to do, I'll make a new line on the grinder and grind to that. Because this side, I mean we can grind to this side, but either way, it's gonna it's not gonna come out straight. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, maybe I will do the grinder side. Well, I'm going to have to come in and make a new line anyway. On the grinder, you know, it's only two inches, so I'm about to go back and forth till I get it in. Over to the grinder. Yeehaw! <clears throat> I went off our straight edge and marked a new line. Now, if you're getting into knife making or any kind of metal work, these things are awesome to have. If you take it, it's magnetic. You want to make sure your surface is clean. Hit it and you zero it out. This is your zero plane. Then you stick it on here without a belt. <laughs> oh yeah, I got that uh, ceramic plate. <laughs> That's why it's not sticking. Now here's a little trick. Anybody that has a DD work rest that doesn't have the extreme model, here's a little trick to get extreme angles. First, you got to turn this little, you know, you got this arm. You want to square it up to here first. Then you want to turn this block around so you can get to this, to adjust up and down. Then, instead of putting it in like this, you're going to want to put it in from this side. This way, this doesn't hit the platen. See, so you got all this room to work. Now you will want to get these if you have, you know, like I made my own T-handle. You know, I just took the, the, this part, carved a groove in there, sunk it. The old make a tool, need a tool. That way I have the more grip. Because, you know, a lot of people buy those whole sets, but you only use one or two, why buy the whole set? But you might need it. We are gonna set this to zero. That's the one part. problem about these ceramic uh, platens. Here, maybe I can do it from the back, since it's safe. So we'll set this to zero. Check it. It's saying it's a little, oh. Hmm. Let me pull this out some. Yeah, I would do it from the back, but this platen might be different than the back, so we'll zero it out from here. Here comes the most important part, our doubler plates. Now. Now here's the other tool you want, just to figure out what kind of angle you want on here. You know what, I'll go with the 50 degree angle. Just like that. I mean, I guess I could do 30, let me see. Uh, 
That's quite the angle there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could even do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's possible. I think I'm gonna go for 50 though. <laughs> Just to make it uh, a little easier on myself. These are my first bolsters after all, and I haven't. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put the belt on. All right, 50 degrees. Now, once again, you wanna make sure we're square. Now, let's get this all tightened up. Before we dial everything in. That's what's good about these is you can tighten everything and move it around before you have to do your final tightening. Let's make it easy on myself and just do 45. There we go. Yeah. Now we can just move these up. All right, 45 it is. Sure everything is tightened down. There we go. Let's get to it. Wish me luck. Here's the square line. I pulled off this square edge. So that's what we're going for. 45 there. We're going to try to just kiss it right across this edge. Check it with the square. Alright, this is my cut side, so we can't go off there. We have to go off the and alright, so we got a little bit to go here. As you can see. So right where these waves are, these waves are. So <laughs> we just gotta get it all straightened out. my plates are out of getting out of square here too that's why you need these strong dim neodymium magnets make sure everything's parked right I should probably make another tool rest like this with the deal over here so I can put it all the way over and put like six or seven magnets let me check it again I have this bad habit of laying tools down and forgetting where I put them all right I think we're straight enough. I mean, the other part's wood, so we're gonna just have to make the wood. I mean, we're gonna have to sand this all down and get it all straight. But I think for now, let me just cut this in half and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. So I think that's it for now. I went ahead and did the other ones off, off camera. So we got these. And here's a little thing to show you what they're gonna look like. So you will just line them up here and line them up here. The rest of this, See how this is uneven and this is uneven and all that? That doesn't matter. The only thing that matters right now is this lines up, these two edges line up, and these two edges line up. Then we'll just clamp one down, you know, make our mark, clamp it, drill a hole from the outside into there, into there, you know, take that off, flip it, and do the same thing. That way we can take a little pin and connect them together, make sure they line up and all that. And then, uh, yeah, then shape them out how we want them. Then, so, in the next video, I think, you know, we'll just go ahead and, um, every, it'll be setting up and drilling everything. You know, we get the bolsters all drilled, and then maybe we can even start working on shaping them a little bit. But I'm really excited to see how close those came. 
nice and tight. Everything's gonna weld together. See, this one's a little thicker, but that's okay. We can even bring it down and smooth it into this one and all that. So, yeah, real excited to see all these. And to do my first bolsters. These will be real exciting. I hope you learned something like, man, I'll tell you what. If you got a 2x72 grinder, it doesn't matter what make, DD Workrest can hook you up. And they are amazing. It looks, you know, when I first saved up for one, I was like, oh man, this is so expensive. Oh, I can't. I've used it on both grinders. It comes in handy for setting it up every, all these angles. When I, when I start doing more production work, I'm going to upgrade to the Extreme. Basically, the Extreme does what I did on that one, except you can put it like almost straight up and down. But right now, this will just have to work because I've got other things I have to invest in. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, take it easy.